Hello, I'm Roland. I shouldn't be here right now. I should be on my way to Toronto. And I would love to be on my way to Toronto. Goethe Institute had invited me to see the opening of my play Winter Solstice at Soul Pepper Theatre. And I was really looking forward to see that. And um, there were readings planned from texts of mine and uh, talk back and maybe a lecture and all this of course had to be cancelled so what can we do i taped myself reading from texts of mine in german and in english i hope it's uh, more or less understandable and there will be also a spanish part and this is going to be performed by the actress adriana hagumi well um I hope you like the small videos and uh, I hope to see you soon in real and um, well, take care. So, hello, uh, I'm trying to read this in English for the first time in my life. Hope uh, this is going to work. One clear, ice-cold January morning, at the beginning of the 21st century, just after daybreak, a solitary wolf crossed the frozen river marking the border between Germany and Poland. The wolf came from the east. He trotted across the ice of the frozen Oder to the other bank, then kept heading westwards. Behind the river, the sun stood low over the horizon. Beneath a cloudless sky, the wolf wandered in the morning light across the expanses of snow-covered fields until he came to the edge of a forest and vanished into it. The following day, 30 kilometers to the west of the frozen river, a hunter found the remains of a deer in the woods. In the snow beside the dead deer, the hunter discovered the tracks of a wolf. This was near Vierlinden by Zelo. No wolf had been seen there for more than 160 years, not since 1843. The wolf remained in this area until mid-February. Nobody actually saw the creature. They only found his tracks and bloody prey in the snow. The winter was very cold and very long. Towards the end of the second week in February, the snow came and continued uninterruptedly for several days. On the evening of February 16, a fuel tanker spun out of control on the motorway between Poland and Berlin, which was completely covered in snow. The tanker jackknifed and toppled onto its side. Two other lorries crashed into it and caught fire. The fuel tanker exploded. Not one of the drivers survived. In the wake of this collision, 60 vehicles skidded into each other on the slippery carriageway and were jammed together. People were unable to get out of their crushed cars and the fire continued to spread. The accident happened close to Gleaning Moor. A more than 40 kilometer tailback soon built up, stretching all the way to the Polish border. The motorway was closed in both directions. Night fell. The drivers of the vehicles in the tailback turned off their engines and headlights. Snow settled on the motorway in the darkness and on the stationary cars. Fire engines and ambulances drove up the hard shoulder past the never-ending columns of vehicles. It kept snowing. Nothing was moving. The young Polish man was on his way to Berlin from a village near Warsaw and had been driving for 11 hours. For the last three, he had been stationary on the motorway in snow. In the distance, he could see the glow of the vehicles still on fire. The exploded fuel tanker 
and the jumble of smashed up vehicles lay about three kilometers ahead of him. The engine of his old Toyota was switched off. The young man was freezing. He didn't have enough petrol to keep the engine running. Occasionally, he turned the key halfway to start up the windscreen wipers for a few seconds. He was worried about the battery. He left the internal light off and didn't turn on the radio. He sat in his Toyota in darkness. This is going to take another 20 hours, he'd heard a Polish lorry driver shout earlier on the carriageway. This is going to take another 20 hours, the man had shouted over and over again. Grabbing his mobile, the young Pole got out of his car and took some photos of the distant glow from the fire in the night. Then he got back into the car. The pictures were too fuzzy to make out anything. He called his girlfriend, Agnieszka, who was waiting for him in Berlin. No, this is going to take hours yet. What are you doing, she said. Have you got a blanket? Leave the car there and walk to the nearest village. There aren't any villages here. There's always a village somewhere. There must be one. There's nothing here. I can't see a thing. There must be a village, Thomas. Walk to the nearest village. You'll freeze to death there. 